Continuing on Law Weekly today, lawyers react to the xenophobic attacks in South Africa. Some of them are calling for the persecution of the Zulu King. The president of the Nigerian Bar Association joins us on our interview segment. We speak about the lessons from the recently concluded general elections and the stamp and seal policy launched by the association. All that and more on this episode of Law Weekly on Channels Television. Hello and welcome. I am Shala Shiele and it's so good to be back on your screens. Let's begin with the disturbing reports of xenophobic attacks in South Africa and some of the reactions trailing it. During the week, Nigeria's federal lawmakers condemned the attacks, demanded compensation for victims and urged the executive arm of government to file a suit at the International Criminal Court against the Zulu King who instigated the attacks. Against the background of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the African Charter, and the Vienna Declaration and Program of Action, many lawyers have also echoed the call for prosecution. Some of them spoke to Law Weekly. We must also certain is whether some of these victims are actually legal immigrants in South Africa. If they are legal immigrants in South Africa, the remedies available to them are the infraction of their rights, which can either be taken in the local courts over there or um, in the International Court of Justice because they are international, they are foreign, they're foreigners or foreign nationals. And those who have lost their lives can commence uh, or initiate a suit either in South Africa or International Court of Justice or report the um, king whose inflammatory statement led to this so that he can be charged and arraigned in the International Criminal Court. So that, by and large, is um, the legal position as far as I know. Um, now, you must ascertain that the uh, foreigners are actually legitimate and legal uh, entrance into the South African terrain. Well, that is no justification for the Dastardly Act and um, the mayhem that um, has been occasioned by the xenophobic attack. But you have a situation where rights have been infracted. States, ordinarily, like for instance, Nigerians who were uh, killed or some of whose properties were destroyed, the Nigerian government can align itself with Nigerians and also initiate a judicial process within South Africa or at the International Court. If they're illegal, it becomes a bit difficult because you must be there legally, you must be seen to do legal business. If, for instance, you have overstayed your uh, visa, you are actually an illegal immigrant. Are you entitled to being compensated? Are you entitled to being protected? Except maybe you have uh, a political asylum application that is still pending, so you're now a subject of the South African state and um, under uh, international law, the South African government is duty bound to also protect you. But there are also fundamental right issues. The fact that you are an illegal immigrant does not mean that your rights have been taken from you. The um, African Charter on People and Human Rights will also come in, particularly I think Article 4 on the right to life. So if you have a situation where someone has been murdered or killed, uh, the right is still there and that right should be protected. So the South African government is only duty bound to protect such right, even if the person is an illegal immigrant. More so, this is actually not the first time that uh, South Africans will attack uh, fellow uh, blacks. I won't even say foreigners. The attack was actually targeted at blacks, people of, of, of like race. And it's senseless. This is not the first time. This is about the second time. This is this time. It's actually a monumental uh, uh, attack, monumental killing and, and um, destruction of lives. And, and what we saw in on, on TV was actually uh, was shameful. It was it strikes at our humanity. In, uh, uh, humanity. It's it's almost like saying um, we're back to the dark days. The feeling I get is as if we haven't given tacit support to the rioters or those who are carrying these attacks. You would expect that immediately this broke, that the government of South Africa would take immediate steps to assure foreigners in their country and to rein in on those who are causing mayhem. But that didn't happen. Even the Zulu king who made the statement, if you recall, it took me a while. The way they announced was going to address the press, it was as if a circus show was on. He expected that government would put pressure on him to recount his statements and then take steps to tell the whole world that 
It didn't mean that people should go and uh, kill others. But that didn't happen. So it's not like I think the government didn't do well at all. And as a Nigerian, I feel very bad because I know this nation spent so much of its resources to help to liberate South Africa. And it's, it is unfortunate if we have to be paid back this way. I think they have no sense of history. If they had, then they wouldn't be doing what they are doing. I think there are legal options. Uh, this is uh, an appropriate time for government to show that it exists to protect the rights and liberty of its citizens. Nigeria and Africa are both signatories to the African Charter on their people's rights. And I think under that charter, government can make a case against South Africa and seek adequate compensation for all the victims of this mayhem. Uh, that charter protects Africans. It gives them right to life, right to dignity, compensation for things like this. So I think government ought to take steps to ensure that uh, through that Nigeria the Federation, the Nigerians are protected. And not just protected, they are assured that this will happen anymore. Let's now move to the courtrooms to check out some of the top legal stories that we tracked during the week. The Federal High Court sitting in Abuja last week Wednesday struck out a suit challenging the eligibility of the President-elect, Mahama Dubari, to contest in the March 28, 2015 elections. The court struck out the suit after the plaintiffs made an application seeking the withdrawal. Mr. Michael Zekome, who represented one of the plaintiffs, told presiding Justice Adeni Ademola that his client decided to withdraw the suit to afford the incoming government time to focus on the enormous task of governing. A second plaintiff also cited a similar reason. With this development, only one suit challenging the eligibility of the president-elect is pending before the court. It's a suit filed by one Mr. Ayakeme Whiskey. Still at the Federal High Court Abuja, the prosecution in the trial of the alleged mastermind of the 2010 Independence Day bombing, Charles Oka, opened its case last week Thursday. Charles, a brother to Henry Oka, a former leader of the movement for the emancipation of the Niger Delta men, is standing trial alongside his co-accused, one Obi Mwabweze. Both men and two others are said to be responsible for the bomb attack near the Eagle Square in Abuja, which left about 12 persons dead. The first prosecution witness, Mr. John Afolabi, who is an exhibit keeper at the Department of State Services, told the court that 14 exhibits tendered and admitted through him in court were retrieved at the scene of the incident. The exhibits include an old Mazda 626 car, 10 camouflage bulletproof vest, 34 green water bottles, and assorted comp stands and hooks. The opening of the prosecution case signals the commencement of trial in a matter which had suffered a series of adjournments and delays owing to interlocutory applications filed by the accused persons since the terrorism charges were instituted in December 2010. Further proceedings in the matter have been adjourned till Monday the 27th of April. And in Lagos, a former Chief of Army Staff, General Isha Bambi, has told the State High Court sitting in Ikeja that former socialite and alleged fraud star Fred Ajidua used a court registrar, one Ms. Rosalu Olurunke, to dupe him. The money, about $330,000, was meant to be part payment of professional fees supposedly charged by Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Chief Affair Babalola, to defend General Bamai in the case of the attempted murder of the late publisher of the Guardian newspaper, Mr. Alex Ibru. General Bami also told the court, presided over by Justice Lawal Akako, that he met Ajidua and one Adebendo at the Kirikiri Maximum Prison, where he was remanded while awaiting trial on the allegations of the attempted murder. Ajidua and Adebendo had also been remanded at the prison for fraud-related offenses. It was there that the court registrar came to visit Ajudua, who later introduced her to the general as a contact to facilitate his case with the lawyer. General Bami says he discovered that he had been duped when he did not hear from the lawyer, Chief Afeba Balola. Justice Akapu has adjourned the matter till the 11th of May for further hearing. And in other legal news, a rights group, Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project Terra, 
last week Thursday requested the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, Ms. Fatou Bensouda, to use her office to investigate allegations of hate speech by the Zulu king, Goodwill Zwelitini. His speech has resulted in the killing, violence and discrimination of Nigerians and other Africans living in South Africa. The group also asked the ICC to investigate the complicity and negligence of South Africa's law enforcement agencies to prevent these crimes against civilians as well as bring to justice anyone responsible for the crimes. The crimes are prohibited under the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court and the Vienna Declaration and Program of Action. We round up with the news that the umbrella body of all legal practitioners in Nigeria, the Nigeria Bar Association, NBA, has launched its stamp and seal. According to the president of the NBA, Mr. Augustin Alege, the Rules of Professional Conduct for Legal Practitioners 2007 makes it mandatory for every legal document signed and filed by a lawyer to bear a stamp and seal approved by the association. The stamps are specially designed to bear the name and enrollment number of each lawyer and will be used to verify the lawyers who have paid their bar practicing fees. The NBA's National Executive Committee approved the provision of two colors of stamps, green and red. The green will be issued to lawyers in private practice, while the red stamps will be issued to lawyers in public practice. The NBA president said the introduction of the stamps will verify the authenticity of legal documents prepared by lawyers and check the proliferation of quarks in the profession.